All right. We're back. We're back. We have James Simpson on the phone, author of Red Green Axis. And uh, I want to talk about money because that's one of my favorite subjects because I don't have as much as some people. But Whatever you do. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Whatever you do. Mm-hmm. Don't take it on a percentage no, don't. to be paid on the back end. <laughs> like, it's just crazy talk. All right, that's a different story. No. Anyway. And, um, and, and, and more, more to the point, money is what drives all of this stuff. And, all, uh, all of these groups. And it's god-awful amount of money. Yeah, all, 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 of, all of these groups that are basically socializing our country are, yeah. uh, are set up supposedly as do-gooder organizations. Catholic charities, blah, blah, blah. Well, Mike will give us, uh, Jim will give us the list. Yeah, uh, which are which are then fed government money from socialist legislators uh, to uh, continue the process of effectively subverting us from within. So how much money are these groups get? De, de, to- de Tocqueville would be horrified, <laughs> uh, not to mention the founders. Well, in, in 2014, they received $1.3 billion dollars. Can I get my 20%? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and and that, that, that includes, there are two large uh, organizations that resettled the unaccompanied, the so-called unaccompanied alien children that flooded the uh, border last year. Complete with their um, families. <laughs> it, yes, right. And, and th- But most people don't realize that they weren't exactly unaccompanied because there were 65,000 approximately unaccompanied children. And then there were another 65,000 families that just so happened to coincidentally be along with them. And uh, so we're talking about 130,000 people. And that's not the sum total of uh, the the, uh, immigrants that we let in. That's only um, Central Americans, non-Mexican Central Americans on the southwest border. You know, there's more came in through through Canada and more came in um, from Mexico. So that's not the entire story. That's just the big story. Um, But, yeah, including two of the biggest agencies that resettled the unaccompanied alien children, the Volags made uh, $1.3 billion last year. And we had Church World Service, which got $46 billion, something called the Ethiopian Community Development Council, in Arlington, Virginia, they got $15 million. Uh, the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society got $18 million. The International Rescue Committee, they got almost $100 million. Uh, the Lutheran, Lutheran Immigrant and Refugee um, Service, which I call LIARS, uh, 50, <laughs> that's their $56 million. Yeah, that's their acronym, <laughs> LIARS. Uh, and, and up here you might have heard of them as Lutheran Social Services but it's all the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service. Uh, the Catholic uh, Charities and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops made over $550 million. Uh, the U.S. Uh, Committee for Refugees and, and we and wonder, and we, and we wonder why the state thinks it can tell the churches what to do when the churches have got their hand out. Yeah, right. Shut them down, right. burn them down. Let's have some real yeah. Catholic churches, which are, which are off by and for their parishes. Yes, Local right, control? exactly. Hmm. Yeah, right. Most of these, these these organizations, these ostensibly religious organizations, there's also the Episcopal Migration Ministries. Uh, all of these uh, organizations, they talk a good line like they're doing the Lord's work as charities, but they are big business. That's right. what they are. That's all they are. They make lots of money. They're top uh, um, um, managers, make big salaries, and, and it's all absolutely, as you said, about the money. Was, you, you know, it sounds a lot like, uh, oh, I don't know, say a large trades union, um, <laughs> the Clinton Global Graft Initiative, <laughs> ACORN. I, mean, I, I want to know where Barry Lynn is. Barry Lynn Separation who? of church and state. All right. He yeah. comes up here and, and insists all the way to the Supreme Court that we can't use scholarships that aren't tax money to, to so uh-huh. kids can go to religious schools if uh-huh. their parents choose right. them. But yet we have one point two billion dollars, most of it government money, going to religious organizations right. to well, move refugees. Right. And yeah. you know, when you talk about the population this guy just mentioned, that's more than the city of Manchester, New Hampshire's largest city. Right, and that's every year. Just to put it's, it every, it's, every, it's, year. It's every year. A, yeah, every year. It's, it's the entire city of Derby, uh, where I came from. Uh-huh. And and so, all right, so and then these groups aren't regulated. They aren't. There's, there's They don't answer to anybody, right? 
their churches. They're well, not very special. little bit. They, they 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 answer some to the to the federal government, the State Department, the Department of Justice, but they pretty much operate with a free hand. There's something called Wilson Fish States, which uh, is based on the name of the two legislators that passed the law. Um, there's there's 12 Wilson Fish states, and in 10 of those states, the uh, Volags run the entire program with no uh, oversight whatsoever, and they they can just do whatever they want. But essentially, in all the states where they operate, w- once they got their marching orders, they do whatever they want, and nobody can tell them a thing. Uh, yeah, and and this it, I, it's, are people surprised it, when you show up and talk about this? Uh, their surprise is an understatement. They're shocked. <laughs> You know, well, well example, I mean, we, we, we know some of this is going on. We see the headlines. We see the government tried to resettle, you know, a couple of thousand people here or a couple of thousand people there. Right. We don't see the big picture. What you have done is assemble the big picture. And, yes, that is shocking. And it, it, it is the destruction, the intentional, willful destruction of the culture. It is, it, that is exactly what it is. And that is why the left and the Muslims have found... Uh, common cause. Um, the immigration and refugee resettlement agenda, this yeah. is what it does. It dilutes our American culture, it sucks up welfare resources, and it creates chaos. It creates division, racial and ethnic tension, fiscal stress, and, among Americans anyway, unemployment. And all of this leads to a chaotic uh, very, very um, stressful uh, citizenship, but these new um, new Americans, as uh, Obama calls them, uh, are being cultivated as loyal left wing voters. And the um, mayor of Lynn, Massachusetts, when I when I visited Massachusetts, told me that you know they had just had. Uh, uh, at their uh, celebration of um, new citizens in the town, and she went to the celebration. And uh, these people, you know, they, they, they raised their hand and took the pledge and got their citizenship papers, and it was a grand celebration. And immediately there was a Democratic, a local uh, Democratic activist organization there with voter registration papers signing them up and urging them to be new Democrats. And so this is a very organized operation, and it is absolutely de- uh, designed to uh, uh, deliver the permanent progressive majority that the Democrats have always sought. And once they've got that, that that's the end of this country. Because well, you know, Democrats they, are no they, longer Democrats. They're, they are hard leftist. I call them communists. You know, it's, it's, it's actually much, much worse than that, Jim, um, for a couple of reasons. I mean, aside, aside from the fact these laws are totally tilted, I mean, I can't get my white conservative brother-in-law into the country under any circumstances uh, because he's not the right class of, of person. But what's, what's much, much worse about this is they're bringing in all of these people that have ruined their own countries. You know, I, I mean, yes. we couldn't help the Ethiopians save Ethiopia, so we brought them here to help them ruin America. That, that, yeah. That's absolutely great. And I'm sure the people that have got the get up and go to actually get up and come here are the better Ethiopians, the ones that will probably mm-hmm. work hard, the guys that drive taxis and do anything mm-hmm. to keep their families. But nonetheless, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're bringing all these people in, they're signing up as, as Democrat voters, and they're diluting what's left of, of the culture. And, and that's really the, the key to, to what they're doing. Well, the name of the book is uh, The Red-Green Alliance, Refugees, Immigration, and the Agenda to Erase America. We had about uh, three or four minutes left real quick. I wanted to find out one of the statistics that you gave us was with regard to the percentage of these refugees who are still on welfare. Yeah. Um, Well, uh, (laughs) they get – when they they come here, they're entitled to all of the uh, um, welfare benefits that Americans are entitled to and – or the Americans receive. I don't know if anybody's really entitled to them, but um, <clears throat> freedom they, from want, uh, freedom from need. Uh, the Four Freedoms Park, where Hillary uh, redeclared. <laughs> right. Anyway, they they, uh, they get all that and more, 
and uh, the Office of Refugee Resettlement actually publishes an annual report, and in it, it included statistics on how many refugees were still on various uh, public assistance after uh, uh, being here between one and five years. So they took, they went as far back as the people who had been here five years and all the way forward to the people who had been here one year, and they found that in this group, and that's, by the way, 752,000 people, um, they found that in that group, 56% were still on Medicaid or they have their own program, Refugee Medical Assistance. 47% um, were on cash assistance, 74% were on food stamps, and 23% were on public housing. And this cost an, uh, approximately, and this is a lowball figure, but it's approximately $6 billion a year. That doesn't include the cost for uh, the unaccompanied alien children, which the Republicans gave Obama in last uh, year's uh, omnibus spending bill $3.7 billion more. So we're looking at, at $10 billion. Yeah, no, not, not, not chump change, except for the chumps no. that are paying it. So, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I just wanted to make the, the other point. The deal here is truly with the devil. Uh, in as much as uh, the the bed that, uh, that the left has made with the refugees, and especially with the Islamic refugees, is going to come back to bite them and us because in the end it will create the critical mass that will get us towards Sharia law and the total dissolution of America as founded. Right. And, right. Then, and then let's see who's first up against the wall when the revolution comes. <laughs> you, know, you know what I find really funny and ironic about that? I am hearing right wing conservative presidential candidates saying I want to bring my religion to the White House. What they ought to be talking about is protecting our government from any infiltration of any particular sect or whatever in such a way that if they were to ever get a majority, we don't see the destruction of our churches. Well, Jim, we're out of time. we got to go. I want to thank you for being on the program, sir. You have a great weekend. And the hey, red, the so red, uh, and the right. red green access. We'll promote it. Yes, we will. Have a good day. Thanks. This is Rich Gerard, host of Drug at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show, heard live every Monday through Friday from six to nine on ninety point seven FM WLMW New Hampshire Family Radio, and available twenty four seven live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in.